So I am sure that most of you, when you were in, when you were in elementary school, um, at least participated in a class or school spelling bee. So, however, you have not seen a spelling bee, a spelling bee like this one. So, um, yes, this is the final reminder that the uh, tickets are still up for the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Uh, it, our performances are on Thursday, Friday, Saturday at 7 o'clock, and Sunday at 2. Um, the reservations are on york.org. It's very easy. It's, we do not charge for our shows. And also, student council, maybe people can get class points if they come. You decide that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so. uh, going along with the play, um, ushers, I will be sending an email information about regarding what you, when you need to show up, what you need to dress, and all that stuff. Um, also, as of right now, we may possibly need one for tonight, so if you guys could possibly do that as a backup plan, please let me know, email me, text me. Um, and we need one for Sunday, which is the matinee. Please talk to me. Please. <laughs> I will buy you in and out if you do it. I literally, yeah, that's kind of my thing right now. Um, also, uh, jazz band, we meet uh, Wednesday G-Day. Uh, it's the first time with clinicians, so all of you need to be there. Fortunately, 
I got the chance to grow up close to one. His name was John Dave Christensen, but I always knew him as Uncle Dave. He was 78 years old when he passed away. Since the day I was born, he was there for every birthday and holiday. Whenever my siblings and I had a concert, he always came to support us with gifts and flowers. I can't remember a time in my childhood when he wasn't there. Anyone who knew Dave would have known he was an amazing woodworker. He did it all, from rebuilding intricate parts from 100-year-old cuckoo clocks to building the house he lived in. Yet he was the most humble and intelligent man, never showed off a single thing he did. Dave and I had many similarities. We were both creative people, which brought us close together. My family and I visited Dave and his wife, Tweet, as frequently as we could. Dave transformed his garage into the most amazing workshop, and would always show my siblings and me his most recent projects. Through this, I was able to discover my passion for building. As I grew older and started to explore with my dad's tools, both my dad and Dave noticed this. One day, when Dave thought I was old enough, he asked my dad for permission to teach me about woodworking. Dave took me under his wing in the summer of 2015. We started with baby steps. First, I learned the basics using hand tools, which also taught me the importance of patience. Then we began to work on small projects that would improve the functionality of the shop. I was so wrapped up in this new world that I never realized how ill Dave had become. I didn't understand this until recently, but Dave had been had Dave had been getting surgeries for years to get rid of a recurrent tumor in his right leg. The pain got worse and worse as the tumor grew back, but Dave never gave up. He didn't want to believe that he could no longer walk or do simple everyday tasks on his own. A couple of days after, sur after Dave's surgery, he had, a, he had a stroke before he was discharged. As soon as I got the news, I made sure to visit him as soon as he got admitted into the rehabilitation center. After the stroke, Dave was never the same. He had to learn how to walk and talk again. Through this time, I channeled my emotions into building a small violin using the techniques that I had learned from Dave. I brought it to the hospital. Though it was hard for Dave to speak, I could tell he was so proud of me. Just seeing Dave that day made me and my family feel more confident in his recovery. Little did we know things would take a turn for the worse. One morning, my mom tried to wake me up, telling me that his wife wanted me to come over and help Dave with something. Because I was exhausted from not getting enough sleep, I refused to wake up. When I woke up hours later, my mom had received, my mom had received a call telling her that Dave had collapsed at his staircase due to not being able to support his weight anymore. He was taken to the hospital immediately, but it was too late. By the time, in my, fam by the time my family and I reached the hospital, Dave had passed away. I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to my mentor, best friend, and biggest inspiration. Having Dave in my life was the greatest blessing I've ever had. He is my teacher, supporter, and family. Now every time I step into the shop, I think of him. And if I'm ever having a hard time, I think of him. He helps me through everything, even if he isn't here physically, but in the heart, he's there 24 seven. Whatever I do in the future, I know I have him to thank. I will never forget Dave and all he has done for me. I hope to make him proud in the future. Thank you. today in the tech office, come to that meeting. And then those of you who want to attend, uh, applications are open, get those in very soon, like before the end of the weekend. Uh, TEDxYorkSchool.org. Thanks. Uh, just this is a reminder that if you are interested, some of you have already come to me about this, but if you're interested in this uh, peer mediation, these classes,
come and ask me more information if you need more information, or just let me know that you are interested. Um, you can drop me an email or come and check with me in person, as, as several of you have done already. Uh, the other thing is uh, we'll meet in room eight, unless anybody has an objection to using that room tomorrow. For those of you who want to come and just talk about uh, how you support or defend somebody during a sexual harassment issue or how you do that for yourself. Um, men and women happens to all of us uh, and we can all be there for each other as well. So it's um, uh, tomorrow during lunch, room eight. your hand have already signed up and completed your applications for a CIE trip this summer? Seeing one, two, three, four. All right, that's great. Uh, hopefully, I know a lot of you have started the application. Just want to remind you to, to try and get those in because if you will have priority uh, in terms of where you want to go um, if you get them in sooner rather than later. So it's just a good thing to think of. And I wanted to share that uh, Senor Daniel and I have put together a proposal um, for a CIE York trip. A lot of your parents have spoken to me about wanting to go on a trip that would be more, uh, I guess, connected with York uh, directly. Um, I think it's great, whatever program you want to go on, to encourage it. But Senor Daniel, I did put together a program. Uh, we're waiting on a few details, but um, it will be in Spain. Um, and so if you want to sign up in the interim and you're interested in that trip, it'll be based in Seville, so um, probably the best idea would be go on, just apply to CIE and put down Seville as your place of location. We'll be going to several other places. We've designed a trip that will thematically look at Spain's uh, multicultural past and present. So we're particularly interested in you learning about um, the important uh, role that is uh, Islamic Spain uh, played even on today's contemporary society, uh, looking at uh, contributions from uh, Jewish um, society in Spain. And it's one of the few places in the world where Christians, Jews, and Muslims live together harmoniously um, during a certain period of time. And there was a lot of uh, really good, positive interaction between them. So we think it's a nice um, theme to observe, especially in today's you know, society. Thank you. Very busy time of year. It's a very exciting time of year. We've just held Grandparents' Day and Fall Fair. You are participating in Halloween on campus and in your community. We have sports that are wrapping up seasons with MTL championships and so forth. Uh, we head into our open house, All About York, this, this Saturday. And on Monday, the faculty will participate in what we call a professional growth day which is an opportunity for us to work on some of our goals for the year. That also means that you get to stay home on Monday. There will be no classes. It's a day for you to unwind, uh, to rest up, or maybe to catch up if you need to. And it's also a reflection of all of your engagement and hard work and effort. And when you're pouring yourself into school, in your activities as much as you are doing. It's helpful to have a day off from time to time, so we hope that you enjoy your day off on Monday. Thanks. Super quickly, I forgot to say that in addition to that, the show opens tonight, right? Uh, 25th yeah, Annual yeah. is a Putnam County Spelling Bee. And several of us have had a chance to see it this week during rehearsal, and it is fabulous. It is so, 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 so good. If you do not go and see this show, you are doing yourselves a disservice. You will love it. Go and see it.